everyone what's going down we are back at it again with another messy ass episode and sip, sip and spill, spill where we create conversations all while sipping sip wine. wine how is everyone doing how are my sip and spillers doing how are my essential workers doing how are my people sitting on their asses doing mm. how, well how are we doing well how are we doing them. i am sitting on my ass and i'm feeling pretty stimulated i don't know about you bitch but my count said stimulus I said, thank you, Trump Bucks. I think it's so <laughs> funny when people are like, I got stimulated. Like, it just sounds dirty. <laughs> it does sound dirty. But you know, my account was like, you dirty, dirty bitch. Right. What's funny with your dirty money? <laughs> I told you I'm putting in a saving so it can mature and I can do some real mature shit with that shit. Because I am on the road to getting a house. I'm planning on getting one next year. So first stop was my credit and mm-hmm. me making sure that I pay my shit on time. And they see that I'm a responsible. Then my second one was me paying down my credit card. So next is like building up some money so I can put a down payment on. Okay. Get the lowest interest rates as I can get. But for sure, I'm on the road to getting a motherfucking hizzy house. All that sounds wonderful. We are adulting and we're becoming better, bigger, badder bitches. And this quarantine made me realize that you need to be a badder bitch than you were before this fucking quarantine. Because right. the people think that the quarantine is going to stop this bad bitch shit. It's not. And if you are a man listening to this, you just got to be a better nigga. Better nigga. Just, be, just elevate a little bit, too. Just a little this, bit. This is for y'all, too. Yeah, I feel like we, like, only talk for ladies, but sometimes we got to, like, talk for guys, too. Okay, I'm going to talk for guys, you know. I'm going to take my, I'm going to put my guy hat on. So, <laughs> You're going to be a nigga. Yeah, I'm going to be a nigga. Treat your bitches better. Do your job better. <laughs> Stop being loyal to your niggas like they sucking your dick. Period. That's it. That's you all still talking like a bitch. That's what we were saying. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm speaking for the women that want y'all to be better on y'all shit, okay? okay. You sound like a bitch nigga. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I go by the name by Ambitious. Ask Fat, yeah, I know. Tere. Tere, and I go by the name of Thug Motherfucking Sammy. Okay. If you haven't already, please leave us a fo- rating comment or subscribe follow us on all platforms at the real sip and spill except on twitter you can find us at sip and spill one. one although i know we did say in a previous episode we're gonna change it but we end up not changing it because we can't because because we can't <laughs> honestly <laughs> truly really we so let's get into some fun fucking facts bitch. Yes. Well, tell me something about you what we do not know okay so fun fact about me is a couple weeks ago i lied maybe like Wow, my feel like my eyelash just got stuck from the top of my eyelid. That's the and worst that was, feeling. That's cool. That was so ghetto. But anyways, <laughs> I downloaded this app called Slowly. And okay. it's really cool because you can write letters to anyone around the world. Oh wow. And it Are you com- gonna find a pen pal like in jail, bitch? Well, no, they're not in these people are not in jail. Okay. They're just around the world. <laughs> I don't even downloaded this shit, bitch. And you and it comes to you like a letter. Like it takes if someone's far, it takes them two days to get there. So you're like actually oh, writing cute. digital letters. It makes me so think of I made book. a I made a couple friends. Well not they're not friends, they're pals okay. and we write I actually got two letters that I gotta respond to. But oh, it's really cute. cute. Like yeah. I get to write letters and I tell people like well, whoever these people are, like, stuff about me I would never say. And I don't care about, like, saying it because... That's not romantic at all. I thought it was going to start... I, why would it be begin- romantic? A beginning of a love story. I just told you it reminds me of The Notebook. Oh, I'm not on this app to find a man, bitch. Anyone trying to tell you to find a man. But if it happens, it happen because y'all are sharing so many quarantine secrets, bitch. <laughs> For all I know, y'all can fall in love tomorrow. And catch me on 90 Day Fiance. Mm, 90 Day Fiance. All love after lockup. <laughs> One of them fucking... <laughs> My like, my love story would be real, and we met on the slowly app. On the slowly <laughs> app, and this relationship took off right. in flames. Exactly. <laughs> what about your your fun fact? My fun fact is I absolutely, without a doubt, fucking hate avocados. Oh. That's that's literally a fun fact because everyone thinks that, you know, everyone loves avocados. I fucking hate avocados. I can't deal with the texture. I don't like that they're mushy. Like, whenever a texture is off for me, I can't eat it. That's why now that, like, I started trying to eat more vegan or vegetarian, mm-hmm. I'm like, I have to be on some crunchy shit. I got to put something in there because if I could tell this shit is too soft for me, I'm going to want to go back to some goddamn chicken. Okay. So. I feel that. And I can't. Okay. So that's why I'm really big on textures. So don't avocado me. Like, I don't care if they're overpriced, underpriced, not in my face, in my face. I hate avocados. So Question. Do you like guacamole? Hate guacamole. Okay. Some people hate avocados, but like guacamole. I don't get I've that. I've never tried guacamole. You know what's so crazy? I'm always the kind of person, I'm like, I'm really visual. 
visual. So if I don't like the way it looks either, that's why I don't eat pico de gallo. Okay. I hate it. Like, I eat onions, I eat tomatoes. But I think it's just... Because when it's together... It's, it's all together. Juicy. It's just like, it's forced. Don't force me to eat all these veggies together. Let me choose when I want to eat these veggies. Okay. So I got you. Yeah, I'm not for it at all. So you want to introduce the... I do. And this one, this wine has a special place in my fucking heart because me and my man had a nice little quarantine date and we was drinking this shit. So I told Sammy, I'm going to bring this shit for the fucking podcast. She did. She told so, me last weekend. I did. I did. Mm -hmm. So we are drinking a 2017 red blend. A fun fact about this wine is that it was aged for 60 days in a whiskey barrel. And the flavor profile is, is a dark, bold fruit with hints of maple and spice. And it has 15 points. 6% alcohol content. Okay, I think that's the most we've ever done on the show. I hope so. I think that's this is it. So Because I don't know if y'all know this, but this is a fun fact about us that we're going to let y'all in if y'all don't watch our regular social medias. We drink Jameson before we start the show. We do. So when y'all think we just getting lit off of this wine that we drinking, we might be, but then... The unknown mystery is that we really are drinking Jameson. So right the fact, before. So the fact that this has was aged in a whiskey barrel, I'm assuming that we're just about to be lick it up. And the fact that we still got Jameson in our wine glass. <laughs> we're about to pour more wine. Girl. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Let's see where this episode goes. Beach. So let's get into some tea time. Tea time. Tea time. Let's do the deep voice with me. Tea time. All right. Blue motherfucking face. Ugh. Okay, so I I don't really like Blue Bass at all. I don't either. He talks um, like he's slow. Yeah, I don't like his music. I like him as a person. There's I nothing just, about him. Nothing about him. He's like he's like your Meg Thee Stallion. Huh? Yeah, because I don't like Meg Thee Stallion because I don't think any she has adds no value to oh, anything. Oh, okay. So that's how I feel. Okay, I get you, I get your comparison. But yeah, it's like because. If you don't really care for a celebrity because you don't like them personally, you don't really care for their music. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, let's take a toast and take a taste. Really, well, you already know what it tastes like. But. I know. It tastes like lovely, love, la, la, la. Uh. Mm. Oh, yes. I like it because it, it kind of tastes like last week wine, but a little bit drier. Yes. How it wasn't too dry, but yet too sweet. It's a really good in-between. When I was looking this up, I was like, it is not a Pinot Noir, and it wasn't So this Pinot is Noir. like a gothic wine, correct? Is it? Because Apothic is like some kind of like stellar that they used to put people in, not something like that. I don't like know, but when I saw Inferno, I was like, fuego. Hey, we got some fire to it. We got some kick. They do. I don't so know back to this uh, dumbass nigga. So Blueface had a party where he invited multiple women to the party. So it was a quarantine party. Okay. It was a quarantine party, and he made them all wear blue bikinis, which is like so no, narcissistic. Exactly, I fucking hate this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, the the girls ended up getting into a fight. Um, so one of them got their wig pulled off, and it was just a lot of fighting. Yeah, she some girl pulled her wig off, and there was just a lot of fighting, a lot of ghettoness, and like a lot of it just it seemed like it smelled really bad. Mm -hmm. I don't think the house smelled very good. First and foremost, if I'm at a fucking party in a blue, in honor for this nigga, in a bitch. Pull off my wig. Chances are I'm wearing a lace front because I'm going to a very expensive, extravagant quarantine party. Yeah. So that means you might have ripped off my motherfucking edges. Honestly, her wig was ugly and it was really bad. It was? Yeah, and I'm like, you're the one dark skin. And she was the one dark skin girl at the party, so they were like picking on her, calling her dark Aww. and ugly and get your ghetto black ass out of here. That's sad. Pretty much being what light skinned girls do and non black girls do around dark skin girls. She saw, yeah. and then like she pulled her wig off because she was talking to Blue Face. So I'm like, what kind of jealousy ass shit is that in the first place? And right, because y'all all knew what y'all was coming for. Y'all, and, and the thing right. is, y'all all, I'm pretty sure y'all came at the same time or in the same vehicle so what is, what did y'all not set guidelines with each other that's my problem like why are we fighting over niggas nowadays it's 2020 yeah so if can we fight the nigga <laughs> if blueface were to invite you to a party would you go absolutely not depending actually if he had a lot of jameson because you know how jameson has like five different kinds they probably have more i'm gonna have to double check yeah. but if they had a lot of jameson good music and if i'm talking about music i'm talking about house music you know like you know that little um, neo soul type shit yeah. if he had good music i mean i'm bored right now so i'm gonna go to a fucking party <laughs> yeah. am i going for a blue face no but if i'm going for the you know communion right and just being out of the fucking house because i'm stimulated yes i will yeah if blue face were to invite me to party i would go just to i just won't wear my wig though but i once the starting with fight once the people start fighting i think i would leave because that this is mm -hmm. not what i'm here for but you did say that they were drinking hennessy so all they i know were. is i can speak for myself because when I'm drinking Hennessy, 
I get real aggressive. Yeah. Because people already naturally think that I'm aggressive. But when I'm drinking Hennessy, I'm like, what are these bitches looking at? Right. Like, unknowingly, that I feel like I'm the problem, but I'm never really the problem, you know? Mm-hmm. People always got me fucked up. People always got you fucked up. Yeah. That's the Scorpio me. <laughs> Honestly. Like, you got me fucked up. The fuck? So, uh, lately, this little blessing circle. Yeah. Blessing circle has been going around. Ami tried to rope me into this. And I'm like, I did. Why did you I try did. to scam me? Okay, first and foremost. Why would you try be- to scam me? Before we get into this, <laughs> I see that some people do can get scammed. Yeah. I'm going to put that out there. I'm not going to say that this is really a blessing for everyone because some people might really get scammed. Mm -hmm. You get scammed by you get stuck in a circle that's not moving. Right. But essentially, a blessing circle is a pyramid scheme. Let's just say that right now because everyone keeps acting like it's not. It is. Which it is because the definition of a pyramid scheme is investing your money into something without a service or a good. You're not getting anything out of this except the money that everybody else is giving you. Right. So I guess it is like... A blessing because it's a come up. But if you want to ask me what I considered, I call it gambling because you know sometimes when you gamble, either you get your money or you don't. Right. Let's be real. And so when I was stimulated, <laughs> I woke up and I was like, I can risk a hundred for eight hundred. Like yeah. when I saw the shit, I'm like, I was like, can I flip a brick? Like <laughs> that's how you felt. I said, let me let me whip this shit up. Let me whip the bricks. I was start thinking. About, I'm like, I was thinking. I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna give my money to no little JoJo or no little Casey. I'm gonna flip it my fucking self. Right. So I went into the blessing circle. I was blessed. So I, you know, I cashed out. I was happy about that. I appreciate that. And when I cashed out, I brought my sister in. So I just gave her a hundred dollars. So I was like, bitch, you ain't got to worry about this shit no more because I came up on some money. So you got money. So you ain't got to worry about your circle. Cause she got, she technically would have considered being getting scammed cause her circle wasn't moving. Her circle got at a standstill and nobody wanted to join. Yeah. So that was where the scam was. But I mean, shit, I got my money. I got blessed. So yeah, it's definitely like you're able to get money, but, but it's not definitely a risk. Yeah, yeah, money. and that's a risk. And the thing is, will I ever do it again? No, I, I wouldn't do it again. Yeah, but if you, I, my suggestion or my advice to anyone that goes into blessing circles, do it with people that you actually know and trust. Because I actually went to two, two blessing circles. Because I went into one with this girl that I went to school with, and then I went to this guy that's my friend. Yeah. And I went in with her first because she just kept posting and kept posting. And I was like, fuck it. I got money. I'm okay with risking some money, blah, blah, blah. I got into a circle with her. That's where I brought my sister in, and that's where she got stuck. But then I went to another circle with this guy who's my friend, and that shit was moving. That was moving. And he got people that fuck with him. So they was just, and he's like, I'm going to make sure all my friends cash out before I'm done doing this shit. And I said, that's real as fuck because yeah. that bitch brought me in. And didn't even didn't worry give, about And then she cashed out, didn't say shit to me. And then she saw in the group chat, because it's like a group chat of like 300 and some people. And she saw that I cashed out. She said, congratulations on your um, cash out. And I was like, a bitch, it wasn't because of you. Exactly. I said, I'm, I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, thank you. It, it was not from your circle, you know? It wasn't from her circle, and it wasn't from her fucking people. So I was just like, I felt salty, but I'm like, me and her are not like this, so I couldn't feel too. I feel like even if y'all not friends, common human decency Since he was, was just yeah to, get to check up on me and make sure because i came in because of you yeah. and i could have i could have put me my sister under my fucking friend when he would have made sure she cashed out too right so that's what pissed me off i was like you know it's cool it's up to god because i can make sure my sister still got her money fucking back right so at least you did that i did cause so blessing circles is a scam mm-hmm. slash uh scheme you know if Ble- you- no it's a blessing Slash a scam, okay? Okay. Because some people get blessed. Some people get some people blessed. Some people get scammed. Some people get scammed. Just that simple. And it's funny that it made the news. I was like, wow. Did it make the news? It made the fucking Y'all, you news. You know I don't watch the fucking news because the news tries to tell me that my conspiracies Girl, you are know, wrong. The freaking police is on, my, on Instagram. Are they? So, yeah. They okay. hit my phone, bitch. You know how I know the police really be on social media? How? Because I tweeted something about, uh, oh, Sugar Daddy is becoming through. And two white men came in, came in my mentions and DM me to about some sugar daddy shit. I'm like, bitch, what are you talking? I just talked about a sugar daddy. I didn't, I didn't even ask for one. <laughs> but the thing is, sugar daddies, let's, let's side note with that. Sugar daddies be the most randomest people. They'll have like... 22 followers following 300 some people it'll be some yeah. random white man with the camera this close to his fucking face oh my and gosh like, <laughs> yes and it's like i'm thinking in my head i'm like is this a test is someone trying to set me up and see if i'm gonna take the bait girl i know that was the police because then he dm me i'm like why are you so pressed to spend money on me that doesn't even make sense because he got stimulated bitch so he wanted to make sure bitch, he was a police and see i'm gonna prostitute myself and take he, me pro- to jail. he probably did think he was about to do some prostitution shit i may look like a prostitute but i'm not one i'm just kidding you better fucking tell him kidding, bitch kidding kidding i don't look like a prostitute i don't <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Down Twitter like I always do because mm-hmm. Twitter is my fucking life. Mm-hmm. And I saw this girl tweet about how this guy slid in her DMs mm-hmm. and then the following week he was engaged. <laughs> and I'm just like, that is just some like typical fuckboy shit. That's some real fuck shit. And this is funny because it's kind of happened to me twice. Well, mm-hmm. once really. I was talking to this guy. Yeah. And he planned a trip to Mexico. We're going to go hang out, yeah. whatever. And then he kept canceling the trip and, like, re-postponing uh, it. Re-postponing it, okay. I didn't mean to say re it. Okay, so he's postponing it. Okay. And I'm like, why do you keep playing with me? Because this, this is already bought. Like, you yeah. can't keep... Why are you wasting yeah. your money trying to change the trip? So, one day I'm on Facebook, and I see he On Facebook, bro. Girl, I'm Facebook on, is where people tell the truth, because they got their family exactly, and shit on Exactly, exactly. I'm on Facebook, and I see that he's asking this woman to marry her. I'm like, bitch, what? Yikes. We are planning a trip together. Like, how are you in the middle process of getting married? <laughs> the nerve married of these niggas. <laughs> while we're trying to plan a trip. So, I, I was a bit younger in those days. Maybe, like, 21, 22. Uh-huh. So, I was mad, and I DM'd. I posted on the video oh so this is why you kept postponing our mexico trip girl yes and then no. the son sends me a message on facebook and he was like why would you ruin my mom's marriage like that and i'm like he i ruined your mom okay marriage? disclaimer the women are n- okay if if you know a man has a girlfriend and you still pursue him you're just as much of the problem right but if you do not know it's all your man's fault. At the end of the day, if you're in a relationship, it's up to the person you're in a relationship with to shut the shit even down. Even if the or, person knows. I feel like as long as the person is not your friend, even if they, like, that person owes you no loyalty. Your yeah. partner does. Yeah, your partner owes so, you that loyalty, so. Yeah, they're the fuck up. So, Play with your mom and not with me, bitch. Right, so I'm like, how dare her son message me talking about how I ruined her engagement. Like, bitch, you, you, I'll, I'll let you let you on game, bitch. You should be thanking me <laughs> that I told you. That you ain't about to end up with a fuck nigga. That your nigga ain't shit. Like, get the fuck out of here. The second time it happened to me. Well, he wasn't, he was already engaged. Okay. And uh, so I was in, I think I was in Vegas and I posted a video. He commented on it, mm-hmm. said some slick shit. And I was like, don't you have a wife? And he was like, no, just a fiance. And I'm like, what the fuck is the difference? That is so funny. <laughs> that happened. Because you know how we're bartenders and like people that are married and stuff like this in the yeah. third, they still try to get with us. That happened to me before too. Because yeah. once there was this guy, he would always come into Bubba's when I was working in Bubba's. And he like talked to me and this is the third. And I remember one time he gave me money for, like he tipped me. And then on top of that, he's like, this is some money for your natural hair. Because you know, this is when I first went natural. Yeah. So he would always come in every single shift that I worked. And then so I was just like, okay, I knew he had kids. But I didn't know if he had, like, a wife or anybody. Right. So, like, one day I was like, okay, I follow him on Instagram. I said, let me at least, like, do some investigation work, like, investigative shit. So I went down his Instagram, and he's married. He's married, married. And I think it was maybe because he has some shame because I always, like, would get, you know, because some people always, like, feel some type of way because I always say something about me and my black love. His his wife was white. So, oh, and he was a black man. Okay. So, he was, like, I'm just like, I'm like, so what is this? Like, you decided that you wanted the easy choice as in a white woman and then you want to press on a black woman and then I don't know what's going on in men's head but that's some real fuck boy shit yeah. if you got a wife a fiance or a long time partner that really fuck with you don't right. be out here embarrassing her because we don't give a fuck about y'all we, we don't. don't we don't so he said that shit I just like didn't even reply so the next day I'm on Instagram and I see uh I went on his okay that uh rewind I went on the, the page that he DM'd me on, and I'm like, there's no pictures of his fiance. That's weird. So but. he had two pages? So I, I, I'm on Instagram the next day, and I'm scrolling, and I go see his page, and this page is full of his fiance. And I'm like, wait, hold up. So I go back to the message where he Yikes. DM'd me on. I was like, this nigga has two pages. This nigga has a page just to solely DM bitches. That is so weird. And then I'm like, I was so angry inside. So I go through his other page to go find his d- fiance DMs uh, at so I can tell her. And he doesn't at his beyond his fiance on any other pictures. He does not tag her. That's so trifling. And I'm just like, wow. Does she at least like the pictures? Like, cause you know sometimes. I, I couldn't check. No, it's no, it's so funny because I had a friend. She had a girlfriend, and her girlfriend, um, 
never wanted her to like any of her pictures or to comment any of under her pictures because I because Luke came and found out that she cheated on her. But yeah. it was like she like came over my house and we were talking and she was like telling me and she was like yeah because every time I commented on her pictures she would get so mad at me every time I liked her pictures she said don't like my pictures. But uh, but so she was pulling like a real like I'm not trying to hide my man from the world well my girl from the world but the world from my girl because I'm just like. Girl, you got this girl tatted on you. Like, and you, she don't even and, let you. Comment. And she don't let you comment on her pictures. Like, shit, if you fucking with me, if I like you, if people know you alive, comment on my shit, like right. my shit. We alive, we in this shit, baby. We live, we live. Like, like really? That, why would you want to hide it? Like, because you're gonna eventually get caught. Because people do investigative work and nowadays. Honestly, if someone's telling you not to comment, not to like, that's a red fucking flag. That is a red flag. So, I mean, I'm and sorry, is, sis. If, I don't post pictures, but when I do. If I fuck you or if I love you and I like you, you need to like that shit too. Right. Period. Like, Period. Because I don't post pictures. I post stories. But when I do post a picture, I'm going to post another way. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to pull a Sammy. Like, I posted a picture, you're not going to like it. I was going to say that. I was like, last time, you got no, my ass. No, I mean, I only said that because I'm just saying, she purposely told her girlfriend, not don't like to, my pictures. Yeah. Don't comment under my pictures. Right. And she, like, never tagged her in any of the pictures they were in together. And she would, like, tell people, oh, yeah, we're just really good friends. Well, I don't know if that's what he was doing to her because he did ask her to marry him. But the fact that he had a whole nother page just to simply message bitches about whatever he wants to message bitches about is some wild. fuck it's boy wild. motherfucking shit. Period. So to me, a fuck boy is just any person. You don't even have to. It's just like boy or girl. Yeah. Any person who purposely misleads someone into something, knowing damn well their hmm. feelings aren't the same. We don't get into that later because shit went down today. But I mean, a you step, know what? Let's get into it right no, now. No, not right now. But I'm just going to say, I'm going to add a step further. A step okay. further of a part of being a fuck boy or a fuck girl is doing shit like embarrassing someone out of clout. Like, yeah. And I say that as in like, okay, say you really fuck with someone and you really like them, but you tell the world like, ah, oh, nah, we just fucking, like you're embarrassing this bitch knowing you really like her, but you're doing it just so you can look cool, which is some lame shit. So, you know, grow up, you know, yeah. you're in quarantine, take some time for yourself and really sit there with your thoughts and be like, damn, like that's just not cool. That shit is lame. It actually makes you lame. Being a lame is a fuck boy, honestly, because <laughs> like if you're trying to, ins you try really they're trying to impress their fucking boys. Yeah, and that's lame as hell. That's lame as fuck. So yeah, it makes you a fuck boy. All right, so let me get into what the fuck happened because only Sammy and my man really know how much I was fuming over this, <laughs> but I let God handle it because. I always keep saying it's a Scorpio in me. It's a Scorpio in me. Because literally two hours ago, I was ready to fight. Period. Yeah. And I was telling, like, I was telling Sammy, like, bro, I fight niggas. Like, I'm fighting niggas. Like, you want some? Like, let's get it. So, let me just tell y'all, like, a little story. Walk you down the memory lane. Because this is going to be a real long, extensive story that I'm going to drag the fuck out. Because people need to know. Let's tell the story. I'm going to tell the story. Yeah. I'm, but I'm pretty much just trying to tell y'all, stop fucking playing with me. Period. Stop playing with me. Okay. So. Me and Sammy like to plan out the shows, and we need to, like, we have, like, a, where we talk about what topics we're going to do and if we're going to have a guest or not, so we can have, like, a really, like, laid out thing of how we're going, moving forward with the podcast. So, I, we were looking for a guest for this episode, actually. So, that was, it was next, it was last week. Right. On a Tuesday, when I asked a, asked someone if they would like to be on the show with us. And he was like, yeah, I'm down, blah, blah, blah. So, we were, like, on Instagram, going back and forth, you know, about... Having how, a whole conversation. Having a whole conversation about it. And I was just yeah. like, hey, are you free on Mondays? We do this from 2 to 4. We're here at this place. I sent him the location, the time. I gave, like, a very detailed description because, you know, I'm trying to keep it on a very professional level so you understand we're about our business. Like, even though we, like, talk shit and it's, like, shits and giggles when we're right. here, like, when it comes to actually getting the shit done and planning it out, like, we're down to business because we don't want to be unorganized. We don't want to look like we're unprofessional. So, mind you, this was last week on Tuesday. So, we've been talking in and out. I think there was, like, maybe one or two days out of the week where I actually called him. And I, like, gave him, like, a template of how we do the layouts of the show. So, he knew. So, he's not, like, in the dark of how anything goes. You know? So, like, I told him. I said, okay. He's like, well, what day do y'all plan the show on? And I said, well, we usually do it the day before the actual episode. So, we can, like, you know, have some time to marinate on stuff. If we need to change anything the day before, we actually, like... We'll change it the day of, but it won't have so much to do with this. It won't cut into the time of us recording. He was like, okay, cool. He was like, oh, well, on Sundays, I do, like, a little barbecue at my place, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, just let me know, and I'll hit you. So, mind you, me and this man is not, we're not friends. So, I'm not hitting you up every day. I'm only hitting you up 
about the podcast and about like if you're still coming on it. Right. So the day before the podcast, which was yesterday, I hit him up and I said, hey, are we still on for tomorrow? And he said, yes. He was like, have y'all started the layout yet? And I said, no, I'll hit you up when we do. So that was like a few hours. And then so a few hours went by. And then I got home after I did grocery shopping and X, Y, and Z. And I, text, I texted him again. And I said, hey, me and my co-hosts are going to do the layout for the show. Would you like me to phone you in? No response. Mind you, he didn't respond to my first text messages. So I was like, okay, I didn't think anything of it. I was just like, okay. So I was just like, okay, I'm going to sleep. We're going to still make the layout. So me and her still made the layout. Everything was cool. And so I woke up today, and I was like, okay, I didn't hear from him still, blah, blah, blah. Cool. No big deal. I just kept going about my day, did my makeup, blah, blah, blah. And I had errands to run before I got here. So on my way to do my errands, I texted him. I said, hey, just confirming you're going to be here today at 2. This man texted me back, and he said, I won't be there. Literally an hour before we Literally an hour before we supposed to meet up. And then so I just read it because when I saw that, my blood was on 10. And I was like, you got me fucked up. Because yeah. I'm thinking in my head, we've been talking for an entire week. At any given moment, you could have easily said, nah, I'm not with it or I don't want to do it. There was even a conversation that me and him had where we'll be doing cross promotion where um, he has like a media company that I was going to put out the end of our videos to like, even because you're scratching our back, we're going to scratch your back because right. you're on the show. We're going to still promote some of your shit, too. So it was even like it was going to be an equal thing. It was not going to be on some like you're just coming to the show for no reason. So he texted me and said, I won't be there. And I left him on red and I didn't say anything. <laughs> and I was like, because I'm, I'm really fucking mean. So I'm like, let me gather my thoughts, my heart, my feelings. And I'm going to like express it to People that know me because yeah. this nigga don't know me. So he know if he doesn't know, I will air his fucking bitch ass out. Like, honestly, because that's really some fuck boy shit. What he did, yeah. because you had no intentions on doing this yesterday. But you could have told but me you yesterday. Waited till, you waited till today hour before to tell us that you weren't going to do this. And it's like, why? And then hold on. In addition. So I left him on right because my read receipts are on because I'm a bitch. OK, I want you to know I read that shit. So my read receipts were on. Didn't respond to what he said. And then he going to follow that up with you never sent me the layout. Bitch. So at this point, you said, Bitch, I, you never replied to my text, nigga. And, like, and that's exactly, and I called Sammy and I said, Sammy, he never responded to two of my text messages that I sent him yesterday. So why would I send you a layout if you never responded to my text messages? Right. So I, me being me, because I'm like, you know what? <laughs> the world be having me fucked up sometimes. So let me just, you know, let me just sugarcoat it before I fucking kill him, you know? <laughs> so I said, I said, you never text me back when I text you back twice. I said, but no worries, be blessed, period. Because sometimes I don't even use, like, I don't even use, like, a post. I mean, I don't even use no, like, you know, what is it called? I don't know what you're trying to say. You know, like, periods, exclamation points. I don't even use that sometimes in punctuation. Punctuation. I don't use that in my text messaging unless I'm trying to be, like, yeah. cut the shit out. So I sent that. Mind you, he told me he's not coming. So why the fuck are you still responding? He responded. Right. Uh, he followed up my follow up with a follow up, and I said, "Nigga." I didn't even text him back. And I didn't text him back. I literally was like, "I'm like your phone, your name, your number's not even saved on my phone." I unfollowed his nigga on Twitter. I mean, on Instagram. I said, at this point, the thing is, you don't understand. People beg us to be on our show. So let's get this clear. First and foremost, you were never needed. You're wanted because we like to help people out. We're giving you a platform to defend yourself because this episode was about fuck niggas, and you're a nigga. So we, <laughs> and you just did some fuck you niggas. Did some shit. fuck shit. So you just proved our point that you niggas proved, ain't shit. You proved our point that niggas ain't shit because right. at any given moment, if you pulled out, I would have been cool. Right. But the fact that you waited to an hour before the fact, and you thought that shit was okay with me, you thought it was gonna be cool. Like I let you know that it was cool as fuck, but I was salty as fuck. Cause I'm thinking in my head like, nigga, like let's be real. You ain't even. Let's be. You ain't shit. Honestly, I'm, I'm not trying to shit on him and act like he ain't shit because I don't know him personally, but you not shit to the point where you can disrespect people because I spent time and money. Why am I on the phone with you, nigga, yeah. if you're not going to be on the fucking show? Why are you responding to my text messages if you're not going to be on the fucking show? I bought two bottles of fucking wine for, for this you. show. And nigga, you not here. <laughs> so, I was mad then. I'm not mad now, but just know I'm shining. And nigga, you unfollowed. So don't watch this motherfucking episode. And if you got shit to say to me, you're blocked. Girl, that's a lot. Niggas be doing fuck shit. I felt like we talked about him for like 10 minutes. Bitch, because he, des he deserved every fucking ounce of hate that he got. <laughs> like, if he would have got how angry I was like an hour ago, yeah. it would have been a big difference. He would have thought that he like ruled my life. But I just think the unprofessionalism that 
you held in a situation like that that could have been good for you because i'm not saying that we are big podcasters but we're up and coming and your media company is up and coming so it could have been a great cross promotion it had nothing to do with us bringing anything to the table and we were just trying to give you a platform to give the perspective of the males we could have found anybody else yeah so anyways it don't even matter anymore so i want to list some people in the world that we perceive as fuck boys okay. or fuck girls wait actually before we get there let's def- uh define wait we already defined it yeah. anyways i'm sorry okay. so yeah so people who we perceive as fuck boys and fuck girls yeah to me i think all african men <laughs> It doesn't matter what part of Africa Hold you're on. from. I said, Sammy, this meme. No, she said that. I got it. She said. Oh, the meme is that me? It said, bitches get their heart broken and start dating anything. Fuck is you doing with an African? Exactly. Uh, all African men are fuck boys. Hold on. The thing is, it's sad that we're saying that because we both are African. So. That gives us even more room to say because we know what we're we, talking about. And, and the thing is, I'm not going to lie. Me being an African woman. Even though I'm kind of Americanized, I'm a slick. Actually, I'm pretty Americanized. I'm still a fuck bitch. I'm still no. I do no. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. I'm still a fuck bitch. I'm, I don't do, say you a fuck bitch. Just I say do, you have fuck bitch tendencies. I have some fuck bitch tendencies. I really do. Personally, I do. And the thing is, when I do it, I don't give a fuck about doing it. So you know what? You're right. All Africans. I, I have a tendency. <laughs> All I'm not, Africans. I, I, I have the tendencies. I don't have it as strongly as African men because y'all niggas was born with that shit and y'all gonna die with that shit. But you know, I got the tendencies and because I'm petty and I'll bring that shit out. Right. And sometimes I don't give a fuck. And I'm a Scorpio. So. I think Kevin Hart is a fuck nigga. Why do you say that? Because I think any man who can any man who can cheat on his girl while she's pregnant with their baby is a fuck nigga. So do we consider um, Jay Z a fuck nigga because he cheated on Beyonce? While she was pregnant, I don't know if she was because she was pregnant, but, no, but I'm saying it's just, any man it's just the fact that she's that she's Beyonce. Like, <laughs> did y'all not ever? I saw this one thing. It said if Beyonce can get cheated on, there's no hope for me. There's no hope for us because regular if, bitches. Honestly, I've seen Beyonce in person, live, like in concert. This bitch does not sweat. This bitch never stops. This bitch does not get tired. So all I'm saying is, if you see how she is as a performer in real life, I'm just like, bitch, you probably sign on niggas, okay? So, you know, the fact that Jay-Z can't keep up. Like, when is his last album that really, like, no, no okay. She brings him on tour. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I was like, I said, why is it the Beyonce tour? Why she bring Jay-Z on on the run That's tour? That's what I'm saying. I was like, why on the Because I'm like, Jay-Z? all of his songs, like, the last album I could think of was 444, which was amazing. I actually love 444. I don't like any of his albums before that. I mean, I can see some songs I like, but it was like, what relationship was it? Offset and Cardi. I'm like, I liked Cardi more than I like Offset. Yeah. And it's like, even though Offset was more popular, was he was more popular, but yeah. now Cardi is a star. Yeah. And the same for Jay-Z. Jay-Z was a star, yeah. but now he's doing stuff behind the scenes to make a Stanley Bunny, because n- this nigga don't need to be on the scene, because he don't know how to fucking act. Hmm. <laughs> so yeah, Kevin Hart, because he cheated on Anika while she was pregnant. Uh, Tristan Third Trimester Thompson. Mm. Okay, we don't Tristan. even need to start to explain. Tristan Toxic Thompson. Why he's okay. A fuck nigga. The only thing I don't get is if she's gonna forgive Tristan, she can, she should forgive Jordan. Facts. Because let's be real. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna fucking lie. Tristan is fine. Okay. <laughs> so if I'm a 19, was is what is Jordan? 19, 20? I think she's like 21. She's young as fuck. Let's yeah. be real. When I was 20, I was when I was 21, I was doing dumb shit. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't kissing my fucking friends. But the thing is, she's Kylie's friend. She not your friend. But I'm, yeah, but, but um, it's still wrong. It, it's, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's not wrong. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to justify. He kissed her. He kissed her. That's the thing. So the thing is, if you're going to, she says she forgives him because they have a family together. Boom, boom, boom. But you knew Jordan years before you knew Tristan. Tristan yeah. And y'all, formed, y'all made y'all own family. That's what y'all did. Y'all made a family because y'all are around each other in close proximity. So forgive her. Let that shit go. And if you want to forgive that nigga, you need to forgive that her bitch. Too. You like, do. I just because, feel like it's so unfair that how y'all because treat Because she's Jordan. not, and the thing is, she's not even like no, like, random bitch. Like, if she guys started being friends with her like two, like two yeah. months before the shit, cut that bitch off like a bad habit. But no, y'all known her way longer than y'all know this nigga. And just because you share a child with him does not mean that you gotta let this nigga keep fucking and embarrassing you and she's quarantining with him so i know she's fucking him again and all i'm saying is like i said before you embarrassing motherfuckers for clout and that's exactly what the fuck tristan did yeah. he embarrassed your ass because honestly what is a bigger clout than embarrassing a kardashian let's be real 
because Ray J thought he was going to do some shit when he made that song. I hit it first, but like, um, <laughs> he's like, he was like, she I move on, on and rap rappers and ball players, but they all know I hit, I hit it, it first. first. Like, what I are you getting out of this? Mind you, he had a whole baby mama, wife, and everything, but you decided to make a song about somebody that else is happy in a relationship. You embarrassing somebody out of clout, so that makes you a fucking fuck nigga. We gonna add Ray to the list. We like he was on the list, but nigga, you on the list now. Cause nigga, you a lame for that shit. The most I don't know another nigga more toxic than him. Maybe there is another nigga more toxic than him. Future, but we just don't know how toxic the other nigga is. Future, future is Future is the most toxic. I don't even think like we keep saying we don't know anything about him except the fact that you be fucking people over. Honestly, that's exactly all we know. You can rap good and you fuck bitches over. So I just really hope wherever Lori Harvey are is in the world. Fuck that nigga over. Give him a taste of his own I hope fucking she medicine. Gets to him I, first. I really hope so too. Because you know what? I saw this meme and said, I want to find a nigga with his heart broken and finish him. Right. Finish that nigga. I hope Lloyd Harvey finishes him. Honestly, something probably happened if he's the reason why he is, and I don't give a fuck what it is. But I'm tired of hearing your fucking name and I'm tired of giving but you a fucking clout. You too old for you to be still acting like too that. Too old. At this point, even though something did happen to you for you to be like that, at this point in your life, mm-hmm. grow and grow from it. Grow the fuck up. Period. Black so, China. Bitch, yeah, you're a fuck nigga. You are. She a, she a fuck bitch. This bitch made money off the backs of, like we just said, Kardashians. Bitch was like, what's a good idea? What's going to get my claim to fame even more other than fucking Tiger? That's funny because Kylie took her man and she took her brother. She like, took her brother. Not, not only did she take your brother, but she had a child with your brother. And we know that Kardashian money don't end. Exactly. <laughs> she has something that you would never have. A Kardashian A last Kardashian name. last name because you a Jenner. <laughs> hey, yo, daddy a girl. <laughs> yo, daddy a girl. Hey, that's okay. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. We, that's we support okay. trans lives here. Okay, trans, trans lives, lives matter. <laughs> All right, uh, Alexa Sky. I know she toxic. That, as bitch, well. is, that bitch is toxic. So with her and her little um, toxic sister Who did she Ari. Have a baby with. Wait, what? Because that baby is not even her. His baby. Are you sure? Yeah, I think it's good DNA testing. It wasn't his. He's someone else's baby, but he takes care of it. Mm, um, that nigga. We should put him on the list too, because he a fuck nigga too. Okay, we're gonna he, ask that he watch to the fuck. Okay, okay, let's just say if you were in the industry. And you out here got us out here thinking that you fucking important because you embarrassing your bitches and your niggas. You you fuck niggas because guess what? It's none of our fucking business, but it entertains us for the time being. Because guess what? Y'all got more money than us, and y'all probably ain't gonna watch our fucking podcast. But nigga, <laughs> guess what? We don't talk about you. Y'all still fuck niggas. So Alexa Sky definitely. Uh, Ari. Ari. Ari, you a fuck bitch. I don't know what you doing. I don't know what's in that voodoo pussy of yours, but. You toxic. We talk about you every other episode yeah. because you make it so easy to talk about you. <laughs> so, bitch, just get off the internet for one week. I know we all quarantined and we realize in this quarantine that we hate celebrities. We literally do. Yeah. Honestly, side note Ellen DeGeneres, honey, why did you say being at home is like being in jail? <laughs> honey. What do you know about being in jail? What do you know about being in jail? <laughs> But anyway, so we'll back to heads. Ari. Mm-hmm. I think Ari, she just kind of looks like a mean person. I don't know if she is mean. Today, I saw her doing something nice. She was mm-hmm. uh, delivering Chick-fil-A to all the essential workers. So that's a good thing she the did. The Suicide Squad. They ain't essential no more. They, the they Suicide put, Squad. They put in their fucking life on the line. So that's nice of her. Uh, but she's just really awkward. Like, the whole thing she tweeted about But once how, again, like I just said, you're doing shit for clout. You can just do that shit because your heart puts it on you. You don't have to show that you're giving people fucking shit you know i mean everyone shows when they do something like uh-huh. charity well celebrities do whenever they do something nice they always see them post that's why we hate y'all <laughs> so uh i think it's weird that she tweeted that her nigga's dick is big enough to handle another bitch and she was like wants to have a threesome like she's just an all person all around yes she is yes she is and i, I i'm not here for it <laughs> yeah with that being said with ari i think that personally in my opinion when it comes to Fuck nigga tendencies. We'll say fuck nigga tendencies because saying fuck bitch sounds really weird. So fuck nigga tendencies. So you're saying fuck nigga is gender neutral. Yeah, pretty okay. much. We're gonna say that right so we're now. We're talking about men and women. When men we and say women, fuck like nigga. Like, like when we say these like tendencies, because honestly, because you know some bitches be thinking they have the mind of a man. Like they're like, oh, I like a nigga. So you know what? Yeah. I hate when bitches say that. Because <laughs> guess what? No, my feelings hurt. So I can act like I'm a nigga, but, but my really, feelings still hurt. but really, when I go home, I'm crying. I'm so, <laughs> so. I think this, the qualities of someone that makes you a fuck nigga is 
being overly masculine. That's like, you know, having like really macho shit like, mm-hmm. oh, like, oh, I can't have feelings because I'm a man. Or just like, just like women, like, no, I just want to fuck and don't give a fuck about niggas. Like, granted, some people can fuck people with having feelings, but I think that when you make it known like, oh, I'm just here to be like overly masculine. We know when women try to act like they don't have no feelings and shit don't hurt them and they're heartless. Let's say I that. I don't agree with you on that. I don't think like that makes, that's a tennis, that's a I calling. think that's a fuck nigga's fantasy because to act like you're heartless, let's be real, at, human nature is to at least have feelings about something. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it's about. So when you go into something acting like I'm so heartless, I don't give a fuck about anything, blah, blah, blah. That's kind of toxic and that's pretty fuck nigga ish because you're putting yourself in a, in a box where you're saying, don't have feelings for me, don't like me because you're not going to get it reciprocated when it's not true. Like, we'll be bitches where we're like, oh, I don't fuck with that nigga. But in your heart, you're like, I fuck with him. I'm not telling nobody I fuck with him because I don't want to get hurt. Sometimes when you really don't fuck with them, Okay, but know. I'm saying, but if you don't really fuck with someone, you don't have to make it known. You just okay. don't. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I think people that like put it on the like forefront, like, yeah, because I'm not going to fuck with you because I don't have to. Like, you know, I don't like people that. Overly advertise it because if you feel it, you ain't got to speak it. Okay, you know what's understood ain't got to be explained. I think that when you constantly, I hate that line. I feel like if a nigga, that's a fuck nigga shit. If a nigga <laughs> tell you what's understood, don't gotta be explained. Did not just wrong. say. Did not just say I got fuck nigga tennis. Okay, that is some fuck what's nigga understood shit. don't gotta be, be explained. explained. Yeah, nigga, I, I'm dumb. Explain it to me like I'm a five year old. Because I want it explained. <laughs> Bitch, me too. Because I'm like, <laughs> I do that shit. But I'm saying when I'm on the other end of it, I want I want to be explained to. <laughs> but okay. playing mind games, that's some fuck shit, nigga shit. Oh my gosh. People who purposely do play, play, play mind, mind games, games. Ah. like they do something just to get a reaction. They don't even yes. really want the. They don't even care about the outcome. They just do it to get a the reaction. reaction. Yeah. That's some fuck nigga shit. And I've done that. That's what I'm saying. I have the tendencies. But if I fuck with you, I try my hardest to veer away from that because I'm growing and glowing. Okay. Period. Another thing is being manipulative and being inconsistent. I hate inconsistency. Inconsistency. And they'll pop yeah. up out of nowhere. Okay, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Okay, I had a friend who was fucking with a nigga for like a year. And they were like good for X amount of months. Like they were really fucking good. But then they were like starting to like fade off hit here and there. And they'll text each other. And so she caught up, caught, caught him in a situation where he was dating one of her friends. It's not one of her close friends. It was like someone that she knows because she's a hairdresser. She does, so she does hair. And she like the girl came over his, her house. And was like, yeah, because I went on this date with this man. He took me to his house talking about, I don't ever take bitches to my house. Like, you're the first person I ever brought here. So she said that. She was like, is this nigga da da da? And he was like, yeah, it's that nigga. She's like, he told me the same fucking thing. Oh! That's some fuck nigga shit. Like, y'all be recycling lines to Stop with. Re- that should be on the list. That's the quality. Stop re- recycling, recycling lines. lines. Because guess what? Even though Houston is big, Houston is real, motherfucker. Do you ever think that you're not going to come across someone that's going to tell you the same fucking shit? Because I've met someone I didn't think I was ever going to fucking come across with. So when she found that shit out, she was like, okay, I'm going to block him. So she blocked him on his her phone. Mm-hmm. And, like, she still had him on her Instagram. And he found he was blocked on her phone. So he would always hit her up on Instagram, like, how you doing? Da, da, da. And, like, the girl that um, he went on a date with, she kept posting her on her um Instagram, so he would see, like, yeah, nigga, I know. Like, that's her way of, like, saying, I know without telling you, like, nigga, yeah. I'm not gonna confront you because you're not my boyfriend. But, nigga, we've been dating for over a year. There should be some respect. Whoa! Even- dating for over a year? Yeah, we're dating for over, like, a year. Okay, so, so since like- we're okay. here, let's talk about this. How long can the talking stage last? I think the talking stage should last six months, max. Personally, max. me. Okay. I say that because. I'm impatient. Like, I'm in love with you after the third date. Like, okay. I say, I, that, I say that because I'm, like, super clingy, and I'm super, like, needy, and I'm super, like, I know that when I like you, like, you my motherfucking glue. Okay. Like, like, we together. Like, I'm going to say, like, like I remember when I was dating my man, I was like, I was, telling, I was, like, I was like, bro, when you going to stop telling people I'm your friend, I'm not your fucking friend. Like, I'm your girl. Okay. And he was like, and since then we were, like, together. Because I'm like, I don't like that shit. Like, stop. Making me think that, like, you fucking somebody like you fucking me. You kissing me, people like you kissing. Like, I just like, I don't even want that. Like, I'm, right. like I said, when we're talking, I don't care about the competition. But after six months, if you don't know you want to fuck with me, let it go. Let, let it, it go. go. But no, personally, I just, personally, my max time is six months. Granted, I want to be together after three months. But <laughs> <laughs> my max time is six months. If I'm talking to you for three years, 
Nigga, at this point, we just really like hanging out. Like, yeah, I don't think the talking stage should definitely last for three years. It shouldn't years, be a year, yeah. But, it, all it, but to me, I'm different. I, I enjoy a long talking you stage. You do, bitch. You do. Me, I want to be loved. <laughs> no. I want you to hold me. <laughs> I like talking to niggas forever and never being with them. Mm-hmm. Not just because I like, I want who I'm going to be with is who I want to be. Yeah. I wanna make you sure want to make sure. You want your last person to be your last. Yeah. yeah. And I'm the kind of person that it's like, but I just feel. The whole dating stage is not for me because I'm so possessive. Mm-hmm. I'm so possessive that I'm just like, stop fucking playing with me. Yeah, it's <laughs> hard to date and be possessive because you have to understand, especially because if you're not having sex with them, you have to understand that they're still going to have sex, sex with, with other people. Other yeah, people. and and because I'm clingy and I'm eating, I don't need that shit in my life. Yeah. So no, Mm-mm. no. But I think I have a, like a good one or two more host summers in me. Before you're ready to like before. to make an honest woman out of you, uh, before I'm ready to make an honest woman out of myself. Um, <laughs> if it happens prior to, I'm open to it, but I'm definitely not like actively searching to end my whole summers. Okay, well, fast forward. Let me finish the story because okay, yes, yes. So, so he figured out he was blocked, and she was like posting. So she like like nigga, I know without telling y'all no. Yeah, and he was like some some some. I don't remember what it was. I remember I went over her house one day, and she was like, he put on Instagram. He was like, yeah, because I love you. To her? Yes! What? And then she said, she said, I was not going to respond to Ami, but he said, I love you. So he's like, I have to hit him back and say, like, she's like, I got to ask him why. Why do you feel like you love me? Because I've been <laughs> fucking with you for this long. Why do you feel like you love me? And yeah. you're just now telling me this. Yeah. Because if someone tells me they love me for the first time, it better not be over social media. It better not be over text message. It got to be in person. Because yeah. I got to see your, like, your feeling. I got to see how you like moving and shaking. I got to see that shit. Yeah. And so he told her he loved her. And she's like, I hit him up. And I asked him. He said he loved me. So I'm like, I called him. And it's like, why do you say you love me? Right. You know what his answer was? Because I do. Oh, bitch. <laughs> That's a fuck nigga. That's a fuck nigga. He didn't even know why. He don't, he, he, he he don't, don't even know why. He don't. He he didn't even try to find anything. He didn't like, have a line prepared on why he loved he, her. Loved her. And I'm he saying because the thing is, if I tell somebody I love them, I have like like I have stuff to back it up. Like especially when I don't actually love you, prepare a lie. You, not even prepare a lie, but I just feel like you don't just tell somebody you love them just because you because you want to keep them in your life. Yeah, that's some fuck nigga shit. Because the thing is, us in the generation that we're in, we want love, we want respect, we want you know. What is the word? We want gratification. What is it? I don't know what you're trying to say. Uh, we want people to like give us like they appreciate. What is the word? I don't know. Sis. I don't know. But if y'all know, y'all need to leave it in the motherfucking comments because I'm even lost for words. <laughs> but no, I'm just saying in the generation that we're in, it's like there's sex is so much easier to get that love is harder to find. Yeah. So it's like if you say you love me, bro, like why do you love me? Don't That's tell me. That's strange. If a guy were to tell me he loves me off of social media, mm. I would automatically. But he was blocked from heading no other way. Oh. So he blocked. She blocked him on his phone. So do you think he realized he loved her after he lost her? Maybe, but yeah. also that's a fuck nigga tendency too. Because so, yeah, guys always Wait, tend you, to you figure realize. out way too late. Because yeah. I remember it's important to have a friendship in your relationship because it's like yes. because if I can't gossip to you about what my bitches is doing and they dumb yeah. shit like you ain't my nigga because I want you relationships to, hit different when you're our friends too they hit different when you're my friend like I feel like if you're my friend and I can tell you shit that I can't really combine with like the random ass nigga like yeah. if I find a friendship in you like you're gonna be my nigga for life right regardless even if we break up exactly and that's what I that's what I seek when I'm like looking for friendships or when I'm in relationships I want someone that I can be my fucking friend first because it's like Romance dies. It really fucking does because yeah. people stop dating you once they get you. Yeah, a lot of people. So do. it's like if I feel like you my friend and I can really fuck with you outside of this shit, I'm cool with that and I can like have some like love with you. Yeah. But yeah, so I fuck niggas ten and sometimes inadvertently be most some of the most charming niggas you ever meet. I feel like if you have to be if you're a fuck nigga, you have to be charming you're, because no one's gonna deal with your fuck shit if you're not charming too. So you have to be fine and you gotta be charming because no one's gonna deal with the ugly niggas bullshit. Ugly, ugly niggas bullshit. I don't want it in my life. Get away from me, the yeah, devil. Like I said, it's always nice to keep you a hood nigga on the side. And I always, always said nice. and like I said, it's never good because it's guess what? They make nice. you feel like you never wrong. I'm just saying, hood niggas build up your confidence. They make you feel good about yourself. So you can carry it on to your next 
sex relationship. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> we just use them for the for the relation for the confidence boost. And guess what? That makes us fuck <laughs> niggas. That makes <laughs> us fuck niggas. Okay, so since we're already on the topic, who gets played more, men or women? I would say that men get played more. You I think so. I say that because women we are born with the nature to play mind games. We always sometimes want to see who cares more, who cares less. I say that because sometimes I will care so fucking much and I will act like the shit does not phase me. Like, in fact, with like, we're going to use like the story I told earlier, like him not coming to the show, I was salty. But was I going to show him that I was salty about him? No. I told him, be blessed. I made yeah. him seem like, I'm like, nah, I'm bossing up like, nigga, what? Like, it bothered me just for the professionalism level of it. But I'm just saying, like, that shit bothered me in the moment. I let that shit bother me. I let that shit rile me up. So women, we're queens of playing mind games. Yeah. We'll do some shit like have a good night knowing we're going to stay up for the next three hours. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, uh, I would definitely say guys do get played more. Why do you, yeah, they do. But they do. I feel like girls get played harder. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because mm-hmm. girls, we play games. Ooh, I just snatched That's the my earrings, earrings out. Side note, y'all. Bitch, I'm ready She thought these were my fucking earrings. And I was like, Sammy, these are not my fucking earrings, bro. Like, I did. stop trying to feed me these earrings that you found under your bed. <laughs> I found them, like, in my car. I was like, oh, fuck, I forgot some earrings. Let me see if I got earrings in my car. Like, and, oh, no, 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 no. and then she and FaceTimed me saying, Girl, I found your earrings. And she put them up. And in my head, you know how you be saying to your nigga, wrong bitch. I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, I'm like, girl, those are not my earrings. <laughs> I'm like, girl, those are my Bitch, you lost your earrings. I don't know where I put them fucking And earrings. I was like, I was like, you know what? Just like this nigga that we had to fucking toss to the streets, we're gonna have to charge it to the game. Charge these earrings to the game. <laughs> Sorry, sis. I got you though. <laughs> Yeah, but anyways, what was I fucking talking about? <laughs> you was talking about who gets played more. Oh, yeah. I definitely think girls play more games in they the do. beginning. They do. Because, like, I feel like... We have, like, an exterior. We're, like, scared. Yeah. So, we, like, naturally, like, talk to more niggas mm-hmm. because we're like, oh, let's see who we're, we're going to get the chance to. Yeah. But then once survive. we get serious, I feel like we stop playing games for some girls. I feel like... This is not for every person, of course. Yeah, it's not, it's not. So once we get serious, we stop playing games. I feel like guys get start playing games after they get serious. Mm-hmm. I don't know, like, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I could be totally wrong. That's why we needed a guy perspective. But yeah. we don't know, for sure. That's why I'm saying we don't know what to look for. I think niggas play games. I don't know what to say. I think guys play games because they're scared to get hurt, but how they play games, they play games like it's already, already fucking over, you know? Yeah. I think guys, like... In their head, they have one person planned out. Because, you know, women, we date many guys, but we yeah. don't know which one is going to be the last prospect. Yeah. Guys date women like, I met this bitch first, and she gave me the most potential in the beginning, so I'm going to let this shit ride out and play these other bitches and see, like, what falls with this main bitch. You know what I'm saying? I don't even think that's how guys date. I, I think, think guys that's how they date. date, like, you just talk to as many bitches at the same time, <laughs> and whichever one gives you pussy first is who you're going to fuck with. But what if they're fucking three bitches at the same time? Because niggas will do that shit. You know niggas who can fuck... Who, he, it's hard to find guys... It's hard for guys to find a girl who's going to fuck them. So you think it's easy for one guy to find three different bitches that don't fuck them? If they're fine, no, it's not hard. And if they got money, too. Mm-hmm, it's not That's hard. That's true. No. Okay, so do you think that fuck niggas can reform? I, of course. I definitely think uh, if you were a fuck nigga in the past... You won't be a fuck nigga in the future if you actively try to change that. Like, cha- anything's possible. So, yeah, I definitely think they have redemption qualities. Mm-hmm. You can redeem your fuck nigga. Do I recommend a woman to try to redeem a fuck nigga? Absolutely no. not. No. I think a fuck nigga has to redeem themselves because they want, you want to. to. Yep. Same with a woman, too. Like, you, people want, gotta do better for themselves because yeah, they want because to. Yeah, because they want it, not because it, Not yep. because anyone else thinks they should. So, no. Unless, don't try to change a nigga. Don't think your pussy is gonna don't to change, change a nigga. Don't change a nigga, because it's not. No pussy in the world is good enough to change a man. Facts. I'm telling you, because my Facts. pussy is good as fuck. Hello. We got, we got 99.9% return rate. Okay, <laughs> this pussy is good as fuck, but still, it's not going to yeah, change. Yeah, pussy's, pussy's not enough. It's not. There's, not. there's not enough conversation, not enough sex, not enough anything. Yeah. Someone has to do something because they want to. And me and my friends were talking about this like three days ago. No, two days ago when I was getting my hair done. We said, do niggas really sit around and talk about like where are they fucked up in relationships? Like we do. Because women... I don't think they do. They don't. Because women, <laughs> we're the kind of women that will like, 
we'll be healing, but we'll still be trying to figure out like what's going, what's going to yeah. happen next. Men don't heal themselves. They use alcohol as self care yeah. and act like their problems don't exist until they really sit there with their fucking thoughts and be like, damn. Because I, I don't think, think that guys evaluate relationships. They don't. About. They I don't. don't I don't think they do. Yeah. And that's the problem because they keep carrying the same hurt, the same anger, the same insecurities that they had in the last relationships and then to the new ones. And at least with women, we at least try to reevaluate and yeah. see what we can change and what we can do better and how we can make ourselves better. Because yeah. at the end of the day, when relationships don't work, it has nothing to do with you as an individual, but it has everything to do with how you guys like mesh together. And so that's why I feel like as women, we always like are like kind of harder on ourselves when people cheat and X, Y, and Z. Because we're like, I did everything for this nigga. Right. <laughs> I put my all. Like, what? And, and that's th another thing. I feel like women, can we stop giving our all? all? Can we stop? Can we too? really fucking stop? Can we, like, just don't give all of yourself to just the give them, give them know. enough to let them know that you love them and that you appreciate them. Yeah. But let them know. I feel like have girls me up. love to, like, show that they're relationship or I'm a girlfriend while the guy just be like I'm chilling there. I'm chilling so actually stop I know a relationship I know a relationship where this man the man he's overly he overdoes it he's like always like posting his girlfriend like oh my god I love this woman so much my wife is everything to me da, da, da. and he does that so much and she just she's a fuck nigga like, <laughs> she be kicking this nigga out the house be leaving him without keys and I'm just like bro if I'm married to you you do some shit like that to me you ain't gotta say nothing about a word I'm out like stop playing with right. me I married your bitch ass when you had two fucking kids stop playing with me like Period. So I think that in general, it all goes to what you can put up with, what you're here to settle for, and also about how in tune you are with yourself. So when you're in tune with yourself, you're not going to put up with no fuck shit. Exactly. Let's be real. So I have a question for you. All right. What was the last fuck girl shit you've done? Or what was the worst? Let me say what was like the craziest. What I was saying in the earlier episodes, like when someone was like complaining, when they try to downplay how much they like someone because no, that you've done personally. that I've done personally. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I've oh, done that shit. You've done that. I've okay. done that shit. Like okay, Ronnie's for example, two can Sam. Two can Sam. Two can Sam. He wasn't the man. He had a big nose and he was ugly as fuck. As fuck. <laughs> That's but a song I, for him every time. Yes, but um, I say that because. As a freshman, I had, because my mom and my sisters and everyone in my immediate family was not in Houston. My ex-boyfriend at the time was not shit. He's the definition of fuck nigga. Five years later, he's still a fuck nigga, honestly. But I downplayed how much I liked him because of the fact of the matter that he was ugly. Yeah. And the thing is, he treated me so well. He put me on a pedestal. He had so much respect for me. And even to this day, when I see him now and then, and I see him moving around, I'm like, bro, you really doing shit for yourself. I'm so proud of you. And it's like, I feel this happiness and lightness in my heart for him because I'm like, bro, you such a good nigga. Like, I, I wasn't ready for him. Yeah. Because I was so vain in thinking that the only thing that mattered was being good looking and X, Y, and Z. And so as I'm getting older, it's like, I have to be attracted to you, but I also, but even to the day I'm not attracted to him. So right. that's my one thing. I have to be attracted to you, but it's like, my problem was I couldn't get over the fact that he was ugly. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't go over the fact, like, you could treat me so fucking well. But if you're ugly and I know I'm embarrassed of being in public with you and X, Y, and Z, I can't be with you. So that's some fuck girl shit I did because yeah. even though this nigga paid for everything, drove me everywhere I needed, if my friends needed something, he got my friends everything. Like, I never wanted for anything. He's a senior. He ain't got to do this shit for me. I'm a freshman. Like, yeah. you could fuck, like, eight freshmen in one night because he was a senior. Mm -hmm. Like, you got, that, you got that fucking seniority. But he never do this shit he did for me. And he, like, literally, like, was so fucking nice to me. But I couldn't give him the appreciation and love that he deserved because... Because he was ugly? He was ugly. <laughs> and that's some real fuck girl shit because, to me, all I'm thinking about is the, the, the vanity. The vanity of yeah. it. Because if you take the looks out of it, you treat me so fucking good. If, if he was fine and treated you the way you would treat him. Bitch, I'm busting in motherfucking open. I'm eating your motherfucking face. Right, 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 right. Like, I'm loving you. I'm eating that dick every night. Every, every night. fucking night. There we go. I'm like, I'm I'm probably sucking your motherfucking toes if I think you're attractive. You, I will, you suck toes? I will suck a fucking toe. Bitch, what? You will suck a man. A man I've done face. it. The f what? Stop playing with me. Ain't no shame in my fucking game. If you eat my ass, I'm going to suck toes. I suck toes. But if you ate my ass, I'm going to suck your toes. So. I would never touch a grown man's feet. I did. How was it? Didn't phase me. Didn't phase you? Did it, he have hair on his toes? Yeah. 
That didn't bother you? No. Okay. But I'm just saying, like, when I fuck with you, it's so like... would you eat a man's booty? No. Okay. You no. Suck no. His, no. I will suck his toe. I will suck his toe. Would you lick a man's gooch? What is a gooch? The gooch is between the balls and the asshole. Yeah, I will do that. Okay. Like, so I'm down. I'm down for that shit. I'll to the gooch, but she but won't, I won't eat the ass. Eat Why the won't ass? eat the ass? Because I, I don't know. Because I guess I was so against eating ass until my ass was eating. I had to eat my ass again. What if you've been married for your husband for like Honestly, years Honestly, when I'm like, an honest woman, when there is a ring on my motherfucking finger, there's nothing I wouldn't fucking do. I would eat my fucking husband's ass. I don't give a fuck. What? Bitch, I, who the fuck do I need to impress? I'm going to eat my man's ass. And if you cheat on me, nigga, I'm going to give a fuck. I'll be like, bitch, I hope you know that you've been fucking with a man that wants to get his ass eaten. Like, I will fucking expose this nigga. Because niggas that are, like, you remember that one bitch that was on on Twitter? Mm -hmm. When his, when she, when he was, he was sucking a strap on. You remember? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, I feel like if you embarrass me, best believe I'm going to embarrass your ass, too. So, if you think you're going to cheat on me when we're married, I'll be like, nigga, I'm going to do some real embarrassing shit like, Oh, you want so, your ass eaten? PSA, Ani eats ass, y'all. If you my husband. <laughs> oh, the thing is, bitch, guess what? I ain't doing this shit for clout. I'm doing it for y'all to know. Like, if you my I husband, ass. I will eat your ass if you my husband. Because I heard that men's G-spot is in their ass. Heard. That's the truth. That's science. That's facts. That's probably why these niggas is gay out here. Okay, so I did one fuck girl shit. We're going to blow past that. Like, that was never said. <laughs> So I was dating this guy. Where go? <laughs> I was dating this guy, and I didn't want to talk to him anymore. Okay. And he was really into me. He wanted me to be his girlfriend, but yeah, I knew man. I did not want to be with him. Okay. And it was like three months in. I'm just like trying to like I'm not texting him back. I'm like you know being real dry and shit. So I realized, okay, no matter, instead of just being a grown-ass woman and just be like, hey, I'm over this. I'm just, yeah. like, being childish and being dry. Hopefully he will, like, give up. Niggas don't don't take personal cues. Niggas don't. Um, a nigga will have a conversation with himself in your DMs and your texts. Like, they, they don't take yeah. hints. So I lied and told him I was pregnant. Yikes. I'm dead, <laughs> bitch. He never told me the story. I have never told you the story. So I told him I was pregnant with some other guy's baby. <gasps> And we we've, we've never had sex, so it wasn't like yikes! I hate you, bitch. I hate you, bitch. I'll be going. This like that's the kind of nigga that goes home to his mom and be like, I really fuck with this bitch, and she really try to play me. So um, fast forward like about a month later, he and at the at the at the time he was still trying to be with me, even though I was pregnant with some other guy's baby. But you really like, weren't pregnant. And I was like, I'm just going to try to work things out with my baby daddy, like, blah, blah, blah. That's I how I got it. myself out the loop, out the, you know, out of there. So a month later, I'm just being a dumbass. I'm drinking, you know, I'm on Snapchat. He DMs me. He's like, I thought you were pregnant. Ah! I said, I had an abortion. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo. I'm sick of bitches, bro. And you know what's crazy? I still see him sometimes, from time to time. He never Do I know him? Have I ever seen him? No. And he's, he still comes up, like, in my life, time to time. And he's probably looking like, this bitch lied about being pregnant. No, honestly, <laughs> the guy that I like this probably some real fuck shit to. He always pops up. And I'm just thinking in my head, like, bro, did not, didn't Mary, did not save you? Did Jesus not save you? Because I'm not here for you. I'm not yeah. it. Like, there's somebody in the world for you, but it's not me. Right. It's not ambitious. I need as men. Fat. I need yeah, men to no, know. Yeah, no, to Ray. It's not for you. It's not for you. It's not for you. I need men to know. When a, do I go? A no doesn't mean change my mind. Yeah, it don't Please mean. Please understand when I say no, don't try to change and my mind. And you know what's so mind. funny? With guys, no really doesn't mean no for them. It means change your mind. It really does because they really want you to work harder for them. And yeah. I'm just like, that's some fuck nigga shit. Don't tell me you don't like me and that you don't want to be with me because I'm not going to work harder. I'm like, I guess the competition is over. Right. Like, I don't compete. <laughs> but I'm no, not one of I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not against. I'm not, I have I'm no not competitive nature. I don't have a competitive nature with me. And if you talking to somebody else other than me, I'm like, cool. Like, I'm not gonna work harder for you. Yeah, like, period. because if you don't understand, I'm a badass bitch. Give a fuck about a nigga, honestly. Because I'm very good looking, and I know I'm good looking. The only the issues that I have are so internal that it's like when a nigga tells me that something that I'm doing is, I'm like, I'm like. Okay. I'm like, I'll see you in the next lifetime. Honestly, because it's like, I know what my insecurities are, and it has nothing to do with niggas. My insecurity yeah. has to do with me. Period. So it's like, if you tell me you're talking to other people, I'm like, 
Me too. <laughs> All right. So I just want you ladies know if you see a spot, if you see a fuck nigga, spot him out, point him out to us. Let us know. We should have like a fuck nigga group chat. We really should actually. Let's have Instagram. a whole fucking Instagram for fuck niggas. Yeah. So whenever we feel like we, we met somebody, we right. just talk about this shit. Let us ladies know like what he did, so we can be aware of mm -hmm. how fuck this nigga is, and we can be a support group for you, bitch. We need a fuck nigga support group. We do. Yes. Can we join? Can we start it? Like a fun nigga support Bitch, group? actually, we should start it today. Yeah. And one for guys. I guess y'all can have one too, I guess. But uh, yeah. Us ladies should start a fuck nigga support group. All right, guys. Thank you for listening to this episode. This is actually going to be quite a long episode, even though we thought it was going to be short. We really did think it was going to be short. We, we, were like, we were talking. We were like, we're like, we going to be done in the next 10 minutes. Yeah. 10 minutes later was 20 minutes later. I'm just like, mm. now it's 20 minutes later, and now it's 24 Four minutes, minutes later, later. And we're still talking about the same fuck nigga topic. So just know, me and Sammy think that niggas ain't shit. Niggas ain't going to ever be shit. And if you ever decide to be shit, Please, be better in this quarantine. This is the perfect time for y'all to get better. No, no nigga's getting better right now. I know, these niggas still trying to fuck bitches and get money. Right. Can y'all please flip this 100 and say, <laughs> That is so ghetto. I'm so ghetto. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you for listening. If you haven't in the beginning of the episode, follow us on all platforms at The, the Real, Real Sip, Sip and Spill. Spill. Except Twitter is Sip and Spill, Spill 1. one. Rate, comment, subscribe, follow our YouTube because the whole entire thing it is on fucking YouTube. On so YouTube. Yeah, you should definitely check it out. Let In this regard, feel, those troll comments, because guess what? We are above them. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye. Love you guys. Be safe and wash your asses and wash your hands. Uh <laughs>